For the past six months, we have been flying our drones during the construction of this new warehouse parking lot. But how exactly did drones help during this project? Keep watching to find out. Hey everyone, this is John at The Drone Life, and today we're going to talk about using drones to monitor construction site progress. The topics we're going to be covering today include an introduction into construction progress monitoring, the benefits of frequent drone flights to collect project data, our workflows and how we personally fly and document progress at construction sites, and a real life example of this construction site of how drones assisted uh, from start to finish throughout the entire six months of building. We also have a much more in-depth article about using drones to monitor construction progress on our website. There's a lot of information I'm not gonna be covering in this video, so if you wanna go take a look at that, there'll be a link in the video description. Progress monitoring in construction involves regular monthly site assessments to ensure that the improvements at the site are progressing as specified in the contract or agreement. A few of the key things that an inspector would look for include observing the construction work and establish its level of completion, identifying and reporting construction changes as well as potential or pending change orders, locating the status of stored materials, and if requested off-site materials as well, checking for conformance of the construction schedule, and much more. And then a written report is created to determine if the site is in compliance with the client's scope of work. A big part of these inspections is photo documentation. So this is usually specified and required in contracts, and inspectors would perform an on-foot walk around throughout the entire site to capture these images. However, walking the site, especially if it's a really large one, is really time consuming and it can take multiple hours or work days. And of course, this is all from ground level, so it makes it difficult to achieve an overall understanding of the site's condition. Also, some sections might not be easily accessible, so the reports might not be fully complete with enough detail. Having photo documentation throughout the construction also serves as direct evidence for any future disputes and litigation. These are a lot of reasons why a ton of construction companies have started to implement drone data into their progress reports. Since drones are able to quickly photo document even the largest of sites, reports can be completed with much more detail and be done much more frequently which in turn gives the project manager more knowledge to make better decisions. Drones are even saving money for construction companies as high altitude images of a site allow for faster planning and spotting of issues. So using drone photos compared to satellite imagery in this site particular, uh, when you look at the satellite photos, it's all just trees, which is what it was before they even started the site six months ago. So there was no satellite images taken throughout the entire six months of building. Another use a lot of our clients really like is actually sending the images to stakeholders in their project who can't visit the site in person. These visuals paired with a regular progress report is a really powerful tool for developing stronger relationships with clients, investors, and management. They'll be able to have a very detailed understanding of the progress of the site just by viewing drone images and video. So all the drone images taken also have something called a geotag associated with them. So it's basically a longitude and latitude coordinate on a map, which tells you exactly where the drone photo was taken from. And when using this, photos are able to be taken at the exact same location for a seamless comparison. So this is the construction site that is now completed. Um, it's the big parking lot. Uh, attached to this warehouse and so we started here like I said six months ago uh, and when when we first came here uh, we were kind of one of the first contractors on site uh, it was uh, just all trees and then uh, what we did is we visited the site uh, once every month and to track all the progress and so this is our sixth time being here and our last time being here to track uh, the completion of this construction site the drone was really beneficial in planning the next phase of construction at the site so what's gonna be happening next month, as well as assessing the current condition of the site and if they're um, up to schedule. We actually have a case study that's specific to this site of exactly all the reasons why drones were beneficial, as well as uh, showing you a ton of the images and videos that we took throughout the entire progress. So if you wanna uh, learn uh, about this site in particular, definitely take a look in, in the description. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link in there uh, to this case study.
And now talking about how we personally document progress at construction sites, uh, the first flight that we do is going to be all photos. So first off, we're going to start around 100 feet to around 150 feet, um, or maybe just you know above the tree line, and then go around the site and just take a lot of pictures. So um, right now I'm taking a lot from the side, and I'll just get. Uh, I, for this parking lot, I always did three, so one on each um, one on each corner, and then one in the middle. So just like this, and then I like to get one uh, from each corner as well. So if I move the drone over here and get like a corner shot, just like this. And the corner shots um, are not used as much for uh, documentation and planning. The sideways, the side shot that I just did on the corner, and then this one up right here, where I would go right in front of the site. These ones are used a lot for planning because it's kind of more straight lines and you can easily um, better see the construction site. So I'll just be going around taking all these pictures at these uh, different angles. And then once I finish this, uh, the next thing I'm gonna be doing is actually the same thing, uh, but now I'm just gonna be flying higher up. So I typically go uh, pretty much the max that I can, um, unless uh, the client specifically wants something a uh, certain height. But I'll go around 350 or um, almost 400 feet and then take uh, the rest of the photos. So with this one now I can get the entire construction site into one picture. And again, I'm, I'm just doing all the same angles. And the one angle that is going to be different when I had this height, of course this depends on how big your site is, but actually for this site in particular, it's the perfect um, size uh, where I can actually capture uh, straight down 90 degrees nadir images without having to do uh, make an entire orthomosaic map of the, of the construction site. This just fits perfectly in a line like this. And then we have top down shots. And these were really beneficial for them uh, to track progress and plan accordingly. Okay, now getting into the videos. So we just finished all the pictures. And so the videos is typically around the same um, angles and perspective. So like again, I like to start at around 130-ish feet. And so what I'll just do is just go from right to left and just slowly move the, uh, the drone uh, across the, the parking lot. And same thing on the sides. And now at around 370 feet, again, just gonna be doing these passes uh, through the parking lot. And then I also like to get some angled shots on the video as well. These are mostly used for marketing and just uh, get some nice smooth um, shots, just like this one. And again, if your site is small enough, then you can do these top-down videos as well. And specifically when you do the last flight, when the uh, project has been completed, uh, it's really great to do a bunch of just uh, nice marketing shots um, so they can make a nice uh, video showcasing this project. So I'll just you know, be getting kind of low right here, not hitting the light poles, <laughs> and uh, uh, just doing some quick passes uh, throughout the parking lot. So when a construction company actually decides to uh, improve its progress monitoring methods when using drones, the next step is really to figure out what, what type of drone data uh, they want to collect and you know what kind of information would be the most beneficial to include in their reports. Um, so some companies may need a fully detailed map. Um, other ones might only require photographs or um, might only require video. So it just depends on what type of information they need. So if you do work at a construction company and want to use drones, my advice is to take it slow. So whether, whether you're going to be getting your own drone or hiring someone uh, to fly the site for you, understand what type of data you actually need and what data is really not benefiting you that much and it's just a waste of time and money because there's a lot of different drones out there, a lot of different services that are offered for construction. And so having a good idea of the different types of services and which one are really is going to be beneficial for your needs. Another consideration is how often the site should be flown. So, you know, depending on how big the site is and how much work is being done every single day, you know, like in this site in particular, we do it once a month, which is really common. You could you could do it every other week or you could do it, you know, every week or even every uh, every day or a few days. Um, so really you should develop a plan and uh, base it off the construction uh, building schedule. Also, something else that's really important is having a good understanding of your flying location, as well as you know any nearby hazards or airspace restrictions. So for example, 
At this site, we have to actually request permission with the FAA. And so every time we fly this site, uh, we are actually in a Class D airspace from a nearby airport. And a bunch of airplanes, uh, even just during this flight, have been flying by. And so you really have to be monitoring and having a full situational awareness when flying, especially if the site is you know, within a big city or populated area. There can be a lot of things to account for, like the buildings, uh, cell towers, you know, Wi-Fi interference, and you know magnetic interference too, which, a lot, which those two, a lot of pilots actually don't think about too much, and as, as well as the construction personnel at the site. So, you know, since they're actually busy doing their their job at construction sites, you know, it's often really loud there, and they might not they might not even be aware that, that there's actually a drone operation taking place. You just have to always keep that in mind uh, when doing your flight. So that wraps up today's video about using drones to monitor construction progress. And if you have any questions at all, you can personally reach me via my LinkedIn profile, or if you would like to schedule a chat with us about coming to document uh, one of your construction sites, feel free to contact us via our website. Also, if you want to learn more about how drones are used in construction, we have a free downloadable PDF in the description, which covers a lot more information about drones in the construction industry. But anyways, thanks so much for watching, fly safe, and I'll talk to you soon.